So uh, welcome everyone. Um, my name's Simon Huggard. I'm uh, Deputy Director for Research and Collections at La Trobe University and welcome to our webinar about promoting ORCID to your researchers. Um, so I'd, I'd like to welcome you on behalf of CORL, uh, but the, this, this presentation is a, a jointly sponsored by CORL and by ANS and by the Australian Access Federation. Uh, we've all been working together to ensure that we have a, a number of uh, activities going on that can help people implement ORCID at their institutions. So um, the Australian Access Federation are leading the uh, ORCID consortium and they'll be presenting today. Um, and we've got a number of presenters uh, also from different areas who will be presenting about promoting ORCID to uh, your researchers. Um, and if, you're, if you want to tweet today's presentation, that'd be great and use the, the hashtag hash ORCID. Uh, that'd be really good. Um, so in terms of uh, our speakers today, we've got quite a lot to cover. And this webinar will probably go the full length. We'll probably finish at about 20 past one. And that's when we'll have some uh, questions at that time, so it may go on a bit longer depending on the number of questions. Uh, if we don't get to all of the questions at the end of the sessions, we'll, we'll cover those and we'll send them to the presenters and they can uh, send some responses back to, to, every, to you uh, in answering your questions. So we're covering five uh, different areas with five different uh, speakers. So I'll be uh, presenting um, just some basic sort of ideas about ORCID and what we're doing and how you can promote uh, to your researchers some basic messages that you can use. Uh, then Natasha Simons from ANS will be presenting through about uh, an ORCID record, what it looks like, how you can look, link that up to uh, different external sources. And then we'll have uh, Milroy Almeida from the Australian Access Federation who will be talking through some technical things and what you can do to uh, access support from the Australian Access Federation. Uh, then after that we'll have Julia Hickey from the National Library of Australia who will be talking about ORCID and uh, how ORCID is integrated into Trove and what that looks like. And then at the end, uh, the last session for the, uh, for the webinar will be Scott McWhirta from the University of Technology, Sydney and he'll be talking about uh, researcher engagement at UTS. So, so I'll go through, I guess, some things around ORCID and, and um, some basic messages. So, uh, as I mentioned before, I guess um, what we're doing is we're ANS and the Australian Access Federation and CALL are really interested in promoting, uh, providing resources that you can use to help you implement ORCID at your institution. So, uh, this webinar is really a, a one of, uh, we're planning a series of these, so we'll see how we go, but we've had a lot of, uh, you know, interest in these presentations and we'll be putting uh, as much information as we can uh, in a place where you can uh, you can access that, and uh, if other people have, uh, I guess, information that they're using to promote ORCID to their own researchers, we'd like you to share that with us as well and put it on a website where everyone can see that, because that helps everyone be successful in their implementations. So, um, our webinar today is all about sharing knowledge about ORCID and demonstrating success stories and what you can do and giving a, giving a basic introduction as to how ORCID uh, can work. So uh, as I said before, the AAF are the lead agent and they're here to uh, help with some of the technical aspects of that uh, to get you going. So issues around uh, authentication, uh, integration with uh, different systems at your institution, uh, configuring the ORCID side of things so that can work properly with your, your own institution and and there's you know, quite a lot of options that can be done on the ORCID side of things to integrate with your, your own system. So they can help you with all of those sort of aspects. Uh, and why ORCID? I guess let's step back a little bit and say, well, why are we all talking about ORCID and why is, what's the ORCID consortium all about? So the ORCID is a, a globally recognised um, uh, group, I guess, and they really um, are the leading organisation in terms of uh, researcher identity management and they're, uh, they're, I guess they're becoming the, the sort of de facto standard I suppose for, uh, researcher, for researchers to be able to identify themselves with an ID. So ORCID have, I guess are an independent organisation, they're funded by us, they're funded by all of the institutions, all the different uh, publishers and academic institutions and or other organisations who are wanting, who are working towards the same goal, I guess. So we're all working together to 
make sure we can identify our researchers properly and do it in a, a systematic way and a connected way. So ORCID is really good in the sense that they're, um, they're, we're, they're working towards the same goals and with our consortium and with others it means we can all work to, together towards those same goals. Um, so ORCID um, have been working with consortia around the world. They've been um, They've been signing up consortia at different, different um, country levels and working with different research organisations to make sure that, that ORCID is connected into all of those organisations. And they, So that includes universities, it includes uh, consortia like ours, uh, it includes publishers, uh, research databases, all sorts of different organisations that um, are dealing with uh, research, research management. And they, uh, they've put in a, you know, a really big effort, I guess, to ensure that there is proper uh, system integration with all of those outside systems. So things like uh, research management systems, um, publisher, publisher management systems, uh, researcher databases, all those kind, kind of things. And so with those deep connections and those really good connections with all of those different outside systems, it means that it makes it a lot easier for us to be able to implement ORCID you know, ourselves across our different uh, organisations. And I guess a, another uh, sort of really important thing to think about is that, it's, that they're really supporting our own institutional goals. Um, so the issue of research integrity is a really important one for our institutions. Um, the issue of asserting that an author is an author of a publication and that they belong to a particular institution and the institution can also verify that assertion and therefore there's good deep connections between what researchers are doing and their outputs and the actual provenance behind it, which is an important thing uh, these days in terms of just being able to count and properly uh, recognise people's research outputs but also making sure that, so for, with data for example, uh, the data that underpins a research paper um, is actually, you know, the integrity is there in that we can assert that these uh, investigators in a particular uh, project were actually the authors of that information and, they, and the data that underpins those, those papers is actually their, their data that they gathered and that's their intellectual property. So that, that's a really important thing uh, these days. But I guess uh, another one is around uh, recognition of, of research outputs to make sure that those authors everything's properly accounted for. Um, and then there's the issue of discovery and impact in that uh, because, global is, uh, because ORCID is a global organisation, uh, it's going to have a global reach and therefore that uh, helps with the discovery of people's research outputs and also the impact of the research that they're doing. So I guess that then leads into what are the key messages for researchers? Why should they be actually getting an ORCID and why should they be uh, listening to, what, to all of us about what we're trying to do? So uh, ORCID is all about having an identity that can easily identify who the author is and not, uh, so it's that issue of disambiguation, so you're the, the correct John Smith at your institution that authored this publication is a really important thing. And uh, for, for researchers, it's, uh, it's important to let them know that ORCID can stay with them throughout their academic life. So if we get them early when they're a high degree research student and they're writing their first paper, it can follow them no matter where they are, if they go to another institution, it can go with them. And the more effort that our own institution puts into that connectedness means that uh, we can help with that assertion as to where they were when that uh, paper or whatever it was was, was authored. And it, I guess it also helps with uh, different formats and variants of different people's names. If they've changed their name, if the way their name is stated on a paper, uh, on one paper is different from another, it doesn't matter, they can still be uh, identified properly. Uh, so therefore, the other, the other, another important one is around time saving. So we know researchers are very busy. Being able to manage their ORCID record with the proper information in it and having that connectedness to all of the other systems and identifiers enables them to be able to put that information in there once and therefore as they publish and as new, inf new uh, information goes online, it's properly uh, managed and connected and they, you know, it, it helps them report that information once and it's all connected into all the different systems and that's got to help them. Um, so ORCID connects with researcher IDs, with Scopus IDs, with ISNES, with Crossref, all those different other systems are well connected into the ORCID uh, ecosystem and so therefore it's very easy for them to 
uh, link up those identifiers and therefore always be up to date with their, their publications and other, other research outputs. And then I guess um, yeah, uh, even funding bodies are part of that ecosystem. So the NHMRC want people to put orchids into their system when they're applying for a grant and therefore that's all connected up in terms of affiliation and attribution and connecting up and what they've published uh, with their grants. And so that's important for the, the researcher themselves in terms of recognition and discovery of their uh, research outputs. And so um, ORCID is a very big system. There's already, uh, I think, over 4 million ORCID IDs that have been assigned to researchers and it's a really big and important system for people to engage with and that, that global scale helps with discovery and impact. Uh, and then the other, I guess the other things around key messages are uh, affiliation and integrity. So again, it's asserting that affiliation is really important and all of our institutions are uh, wanting to make sure that, our, that we can count people's publications and research outputs easily and this, uh, that's one of the hardest things for us to do. So by having ORCID IDs connected up properly, that makes our lives easier and it makes uh, it much easier for researchers to be able to assert those uh, you know, that they're an author of a publication or a research output or some other uh, work that they can link in. And it, it gives them recognition if they've had grants awarded to them. Uh, other awards that are affiliated with their research output, that can be put into their profiles and, and give them recognition. And I guess one thing is that ORCID's not just another system. It's not a fad. It's not a social network. Um, it's not something that's going to go away. It's fully supported by a global network of, of people who are supporting uh, the work to identify researchers. And because it's uh, part of our consortium, you know, uh, we're part of our consortium is part of ORCID um, and our institutions are paying money and we're making sure that all of our systems are connected up to, to it. It's, it's a, a really strong and important message for people to engage with it because it's, it'll help integrate with all the other systems that they're trying to, to work with. So it's, it's not a research gate. It's not something uh, out there that may disappear in the future. It's something that's well supported and understood and across all of our institutions. And for the researcher themselves, it's, uh, it's quick and it's easy and it's free and uh, they, they, can, they can do a minimum amount, which is just get an ORCID ID and make sure it's known and, and used and that they tell people about it or they can put in some extra work in order to make sure that all of their publications are in their ORCID profile. And we, of course, are here to, to help with all of that. So that was all I was going to cover. So um, what I'd like to do now is uh, hand over to uh, Natasha simons Romance, who's going to go through what an ORCID record looks like and how it's connected in with, with other systems. 